let's have a look on three methods for creating a chalkboard effect. You need an image and, of course, a chalkboard background. The first method is the easiest to apply, but it will be destructive. Basically, to create a chalkboard effect, we need to create an outline of the image and then apply it on top of the chalkboard background. Let's first start by duplicating the original image by pressing Command J or Control J on Windows and then moving it on top of the background. To create the outline, we can apply the detect edges from the filter menu. This creates a nice outline which we can use. But first, we need to clean it up a bit. Let's get rid of the colors by adding an HSL adjustment by pressing the command U or Ctrl U on Windows. We can minimize the saturation to get a black and white image. The HSL adjustment has been added on top of the layer stack. So let's drag and drop it on the name of the image layer so that it becomes a child of the image layer with as a result that it will be clipped to the image layer or in other words applied only to the image layer. To make thicker lines we can increase the white level by applying a levels adjustment. I will gently increase the black level and then lower the white level. This will get us nice crispy white lines. We can now apply this image layer in the screen blend mode. We now have our chalkboard effect. Awesome! As the image I used was not covering the whole canvas, I got a white line on the left, which I can easily remove this by adding a mask to the image layer and brush out the parts I don't need with black in the mask layer. To fine tune the effect, I can go into the blend options and dim down the strength by adjusting the blend ranges as shown. This will get a more faded look which definitely fits better with the chalkboard background image. Pretty cool. Let's have a look at method 2 and 3. Both of these create an outline of the image without using the detect edges filter, which was destructive. So let's copy the image again and move it to the top of the layer stack. This time I will use a black and white adjustment to remove the color. Let's also make sure the adjustment is clipped to the image by making it a child of the image layer. Next thing we are going to do is to add a Gaussian blur effect. This will blur the image, but when we put the blend mode of the blur layer to divide, we get an outline of the image, very similar to the detect edges filter. However, the outline is in black. So by adding an invert adjustment, we can invert the black and the whites, resulting on exactly what we need to blend in. Just as before, we can add a levels adjustment to make the white outline stronger by slightly increasing the black level, combined with a decrease in the white level. If you want even thicker lines, you could also add a maximum blur on top of the levels adjustment and set the value to 2. When we set the blend of the image to screen, we get our chalkboard effect. The last method is very similar, but we will use a slightly different method to get the outline. I'm going to duplicate the image layer again and move it to the top. This time, I will start by inverting the image by applying an invert adjustment. Before moving on, I will make a group and move the invert adjustment to this group. If I now change the blend mode of the group to linear burn, we get pure black. However, when we add a Gaussian blur to the group and increase the blur radius, notice what happens. We almost get the same results as the detect edges filter. Once I have found a good blur radius, I'm going to convert the colored outline to black and white, but this time I will use the black and white adjustment. This will give a bit more control on thickness of the various parts of the outline. From here, the steps are the same. We add a levels adjustment to increase the line thickness and then apply this in screen blend mode. 
To finish the effect, let's write something on the chalkboard ourselves. I will add a pixel layer and draw a simple arrow with white. As you see, the white is way too strong. But by changing the blend range of the underlying layer in the blend options, we can make the arrow blend in much more naturally with the chalkboard. To make it perfect, we can fine tune the opacity and we are done. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until the next video.